Do you want um, me to talk about Man of Madonna, I guess? Yeah, go for it. Um, so me and my co-op partner, we beat Man of Madonna, even though we had to beat the last two chapters five fucking times. That game has a dumb choice at the end where if you fuck up one thing, someone gets shot, and I'm sure you both know what I'm talking about. That's always the case in the final chapter. And it was so <laughs> annoying. I did an accidental stabby stab. Yeah, my partner accidentally stabby stabbed me too, but then I found out it wasn't an accident, so we had to redo that scene again. <laughs> yeah. And he went, "Oh, it was either kill me or kill or kill you," well, and I'm like, well, "Oh, thanks." Well, it is an accident, unless I guess because the thing is, like, if you're paying attention to the story at that point. Oh, he had yeah. already beaten it, so he knew. Oh my god! Because I see because yeah. I on one player, I like I I attacked the the zombie attacking me, but then like literally as the, after I saw what had really happened, I was like, God damn it! I should I I knew this because yeah. I just fucking paid I mean, attention to everything else going on. So like the one thing I will say is that at least the final two chapters are incredibly short. So if you fuck up, you can easily go back, and you can beat the game within like 15, 20 minutes, depending on There's like no going back. Yeah. Right. The, so, I mean, Man of Dawn was fine. I'm a big fan of, of Until Dawn, like a huge fan of, of that game. It's one of my favorite PlayStation 4 games. Um, mm. I, I'm also a big fan of the unintentional co-op that that game spawned. The whole, like, having, like, six friends on a couch and just passing the controller back, in, back and forth when that wasn't what was intended was super cool. Um, so I went into Man of Dawn originally with super high expect- expectations because I loved Unto Dawn. I'm so glad that my co-op partner and you guys, a couple of their friends, dim them down a bit because I think I dimmed my expectation a bit too low because I actually enjoyed Man Man of Dawn to an extent. I feel like if I played it single player, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did because playing some playing these games in co-op when I'm seeing one thing and my partner's seen something completely different is so cool because of that just amount of anxiety that it builds where it's like don't fuck up because i can't see what you're doing <laughs> like i can't see what you're doing so i'm scared of a mistake's going to happen or it's like or it's like oh well what was that sound that i just heard oh no i broke the cap because we were both dumb like it's i i love how it does that but then a part of me is just like it man of a dawn was just okay I didn't care about any of the characters as much as I did about the Until Until Dawn kids. Because one thing about Until Until Dawn that it does very, very well, at least to me, is you don't care about the kids going in. By the end of it, I I cared for characters that I didn't think I was going to care for. Can I bring up up one thing about Madame Dawn? I had, there is one actor in there. Uh, I think his name is Sean Ashmore. He plays yeah, uh, what, Jack what's his name Joyce in, in Quantum in Quantum Break. What, what's his name? Uh, what's his character's name in Man of Love Madonna? Conrad. Con- Conrad. Okay, so so, the, <laughs> so I I I I love Sean Ashmore as an actor. I love everything he's in. Uh, hashtag Watch the movie Frozen, not the princess one. Please um, play Quantum Break. He rocks in that game too. But so you have this like incredibly talented actor in here and I'm loving his performance. He's playing a douchebag pretty well. It's it's, it's all good. He's um, kind of the, a lovable douche though. W- with He's the choice kind of a lovable douche. With the choices I made in the game, I I don't think this this is much of a spoiler. He literally dipped out like and within like the first hour of the game and he did not mm-hmm. appear until like five seconds before the credits happened. I'm just like, okay, here's this incredibly then, talented actor, and he's not in the majority of the game. He can if, be, but because of the you, choices I made, I'm just like, oh, that sucks. If you, if you end up doing that, there is an ending that you can get that just totally fucks it all up. And the, and the ending doesn't tell you that until it shows you the epilogue, and there is a cheap as fuck jump scare that almost made me piss myself that I was so angry at. Because the game doesn't tell you, and then the game's like, oh, guess what happened to this person? And you're like, wow, this ending isn't good. When you made it seem like the best ending. When you when you Hashtag said your partner stop um, jump scares. When you said your you, partner picked a thing that killed you, and you said he did it on purpose, right? Well, so at that point we had already lost someone and we were planning on going through the game not losing anybody. But then we ended up losing someone in a scene that to me was kind of unfair. Like if you didn't look up a guide for this scene, I could see anyone getting fucked up because the Can scene you makes you think you have to do one to thing. It. Uh, it's when you have two characters and one of the pirates and the pirate kind of is going crazy and he has a gun. 
Oh, I I got through that my first time. We I, 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 I got felt through incredibly it lucky. <laughs> I got through it fine. It was my partner that picked an option that he thought was the right option. Boom, instantly got shot. There was no attempting to fix it. Nothing. And we ended up messing it up a few times because we were thinking, oh, if we just deny it, we'll be fine. Well, if you deny it, you still get shot. We ended up having to look up a guide on how to do it correctly because it was so vague. Because you do what you think is going to work. And it just doesn't work. And it's like, so are we meant to lose someone? No, you have to do it so specifically. You need to pick the right choices or else you get shot. There's no Uh, ifs, ands, or buts on it. Hashtag high five, Blaine. (laughs) It's just like, it's that. My main complaint, I'll just get to the point really fast because I'm going to talk about Little Hope a little bit because we just started that. Um, is that I didn't care about any of the characters enough to care about, oh, we, oh, everybody lived. Yay. It was like, oh, that's cool. Everybody lived. We got the achievement for everybody living. It was just like, I kind of don't care about these people. <laughs> like, and it's like, I get it that it's a short anthology game, so it's meant to be short. But, but Until Dawn added a lot of really awesome backstory that you could find. And this game just kind of like shoves it in kind of. It's like, oh, we need to give this game a background anyway. Let's just shove it into optional papers that you can pick up. And there's so many like horror movie tropes that, while well, you can argue that Until Dawn was also tropey, the way that they handled some of these tropes was like, why is this ship still on the water? Why does this thing still work? This doesn't make any sense. To, to the point where we were just talking over the game, like, how are they able to do this? Why are they well, doing this? Until- yeah, because like until dawn had the advantage of like I mean I'm not I actually will not spoil that game because if you haven't played it, um, it is one of the best PS4 games. Um, it is so fucking go good. It it's um, it is it is the, the best story, slasher film of recent memory. No, literally. Um, <laughs> it, it, it. Well, actually, I would say no. Your next is really good, but aside from that, maybe um, it might be the best slasher film of memory. Um, but that being said, um, the way the story flows in until dawn it like starts out very tropey and then like the way it subverts quite a few of those tropes like i almost want to compare it to cabin in the woods but it's not quite on that level of like absurdity it's just on a very big level of like the writers are know what they're doing and are knowing how to work around it jose why you keep smiling no reason you having fun i just i just like to smile i'm a happy boy See what what Blaine just said is totally true, and that's why Man Man of the Dawn was so disappointing for me because I didn't feel like that was there at all. Like I felt like the the the, the like writing prowess that they did with Until Dawn was just gone. Yeah, it felt it felt <laughs> overall weaker. Like I, again, like because I, I I've said this before, it's not the quote unquote ending twist of man of madan that i have a problem with it's me, the, the overall me, a lot of the yeah. narrative just felt very inconsequential it didn't grip me yeah and it's like i mean the one thing i will say is that the curator being used as like a story pushing i don't want to say an object but like a i don't want to say creature either because we don't know what the fuck he is just like the curator being used to push these stories is an interesting concept. I just hope they don't weigh too heavily on it for like a last minute twist at the end of ha- uh, at the end of like House of House of Ashes or or something. But so we did start L- Little Hope last last night. I've been told by multiple people if I didn't like Man Man, Man of Madon, I'm gonna love L- Little Hope, and I can already enjoy it because a lot of the quality of life Im- improvements that they made to it following Man of Madon, there's like more accessibility features. There is just the one problem that man that Man of Madon had was you didn't know what would what would push the story forward. So you would be looking at objects trying oh, to get yeah, the backstory. Yeah. Then your partner would just push the story forward. You're like, I was reading that. Like yeah, it like, didn't even tell until you. Dawn, like you, you felt like you could at least parse of like what is progress and what's not, except for a yeah. few instances that felt kind of intentional, which is fine. Yeah. And also, Man like, of, it's, it's the weird thing. Replaying Man of Madon, I was supposed to go back and replay it. I like started it. I just couldn't. Bring yeah, I would it. say if you can download I like three times. <laughs> if you can download the curator's cut, I would suggest doing that I, because that I actually did. adds. Just, okay, eh. okay. But so, like, what Little Hope does is when you're in a room or or like an area, like before you can move on, the little icon 
over items that you could pick up is different compared to the icon that moves the story forward, which I love. It lets me know, hey, you can pick up these objects, you can look around this room, and then when you want to push the story forward, you go to this area and hit A. Because that A is different than the A for picking stuff up. Which I really appreciate as someone who actually wants to get the backstory to Little Hope. I am legitimately far more interested in doing... Also, also, uh, Little Hope is... Uh, very much a kind of Silent Hilly experience. That is what it's I've better, been told from multiple it's a, people. It's a better Silent Hill game than the medium. That's yeah. what I've also heard. But it's like, to um, me, um, the one thing I will say, and I'll bring this up really, really quickly, is so my co-op partner has already played it. He has beaten it a couple times. I've never played it. So when we booted up the uh, co-op game, the really cool thing that happened, and Blaine wasn't in here, so I can tell Blaine this because it was really, really cool. So we booted up, and and the curator actually said something different. He flat out was like, oh, I see that there are two of you here. One of you, this is not your first time. I see that you keep That's coming cool. back trying to get a better out- outcome. Like he specifically pointed out the fact that my partner had played it multiple times. And then he goes, but I can see that one of you you are new to this, so I'll just give you the the uh, the uh, rundown. And then he also brought up the fact that, oh, I see that one of you maybe didn't get the outcome that you didn't want when 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 you gave it a shot. Maybe try to work together with your with your with your partner to get the outcome that you truly want. So it was just these cool like little things added in there to show that we, that I was playing with another person and to show that, that person had beaten the game multiple times. And like also point out that in one of their playthroughs they had lost people. So oh maybe try to work together to not lose people. For, like it was like it was so cool. For what it's worth, um, so when me and Corey played when we streamed it, I guess I was considered the player one or whatever and Corey yeah. was player two it's worth doing both because there Corey had control of characters at certain times that i didn't have control of. we yeah. were completely different locations so he was exploring places i had never been he's looking at notes like he kind of communicated to me like just you know via discord uh voice chat just kind of what he was seeing but it might be worth going through a second time as the other uh you know player one player two whatever just to kind of see that I mean, we'll try. I know we're talking about co-oping Outriders when that comes out, but we're definitely doing House of House of Ashes when that comes out because I'm slowly starting to like these games a bit more. And with House of Ashes looking like something mixed with the cave and the descent, I feel like I'm gonna fucking love the shit out of that one. And I know what in- the descent is. What's the cave? Um, apparently the cave has kind of the same premise of the descent a little bit. I've never seen it, but but my co-op partner has. It's sort of like a weirder version of the descent, where instead of it just being like creatures in the cave that were like mutated creatures, the cave kind of has to deal with with this cave that has this like, that has this like, bacteria or like thing in it that forces people to like change and it becomes a host of this thing i don't know i damn that sounds cool wrong, but like that's that's the like that's the vibes that we were getting from the from the house of ashes trailer mm-hmm. and i've been wanting them to stop doing the ghouls and ghost stuff and go instantly into like creatures again yeah. so i'm really hoping that that's what house of ashes is because then i will be 100 percent here for it and we also think that we might have found a little hint that there may be a fourth game coming that they haven't announced yet. Which yeah, you I should talk that about that, Sarah. You should talk uh, about that. Uh huh. Like now. You should talk about that hint. Yeah. Just, well, it's a quick thing. Oh, so so at the beginning of of uh of Little Hope, the uh, curator goes to take a book off the shelf, which says Little Little Hope on it. He he like basically runs this li- li- library of like stories about death. And he takes the Little Hope book off the shelf, and on the shelf, you see four four books all have different s- symbols on them. One of them has the House of Ashes. Uh, no, one of them has the House of Ashes. I think it's a half moon on it. One of them has a Man of Madon, uh, like a nautical symbol on it. And the Little Hope book has a little wicker f- figure on it. Well, there was a fourth book on there. 
And for those who don't know, Man of Madon was announced first, then Little Hope and House of Ashes w- w- was announced at basically the same time. They haven't announced a fourth game. <laughs> but there was four books on the shelf. And we actually had to pause the game because I literally talked to my partner. I'm like, did you see a fourth book? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, had, had they announced a fourth game? He was like, no. So we're like 99% sure that House of Ashes is going to end with a surprise r- reveal trailer for a fourth Dark Pictures game that they haven't an- announced, which would be really fucking cool. <laughs> what if it, they're announcing that they're working on a Silent Hill game? I would lose my ever-loving I- shit. <laughs> That would be the one thing that would make me go, yeah, fine, give me a Silent Hill game. Well, I, already, I mean... I already don't want one, but that would I mean, really, really fast, the rumor is that the Dark Pictures anthology started as a Silent Hill and anthology that uh, Konami said no to, which, looking back on the story of Man of Madon and looking at Little Hope, I believe, I think I can believe it. Eh, I can see it for Little Hope, maybe not Man of Madon, that's... Well, I, that's that is like a tangent. That's the rumor that happens every single time a new horror game comes. Out. Like, yeah. I mean, there are like, 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 not Sanitarium. That's a really good adventure game. Um, Dementium the Ward, like, that was a true story. Like, that was literally they pitched a Silent Hill game and it didn't go anywhere. But like now, I feel like every time there's a new horror game come out, I hear someone be like, "Oh, did you know that this? I think this one seems li- like there's rumor has it that this was like a Silent Hill game, but never got made into." It. I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna end me talking about like, yeah, I'm excited to play Little Little Hope. I'm excited for House of Ashes more. I am gonna be doing a blog post slash essay on how I think Supermassive has been handling the horror genre in video games. Um, it's gonna be big. Like, this shit's gonna be wide. <laughs> like, I'm pretty much gonna dive deep into like the genre of horror in both film and games, and how Supermassive handled until until dawn, and how they're handling this Dark Pictures anthology thing. Uh, but I'm work- currently working on the notes for that because I'm not going to start that till I beat Little Hope. So please look forward to it because I'm really excited to write about it as someone who studied horror in college. So I'm very I'm excited to, to very excited to dis- to discuss this. But also the out the Outriders demo finished downloading. So nice. We'll we'll get there. <laughs> um, we have about five minutes, so I won't necessarily dive super deep in anything. I um I don't want to get into my doom uh, eternal the ancient gods dlc notes because i made a lot of them and i know i've been lagging on churning out that video version why did of, i see, of why did i see a shirtless maybe naked doom guy in your twitch video on it what aren't you telling wait, me wait what <laughs> baby sh- naked what i saw like a uh it, it was like a replay of your twitch stream of it and there was a doom guy who was shirtless maybe Naked, oh yeah, that that that's a long story. Build the tea. Tell me, I just made pictures. <laughs> yeah, what? I'll, I'll talk to you about it after. <laughs> I, I, uh, I have some. I sent Jose some piece of surprise news that uh, I wanted to briefly bring up, but um, it is confirmed that a uh, Bioshock Four is being worked on. Oh, that's it, been known it, forever. Oh, good. <laughs> that's been no forever. We like, love that's Corey, been, but uh, we that's hate been you. a not so held secret in the gaming industry. For yes, exactly. Forever. Not so, but it's been They've gone to yeah. go on. Sorry, uh, no. It's I was just gonna say like now it's even more confirmed. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so I, I won't get into my Doom Eternal notes aside from this is going to sound really weird because you know I think burnout like on any kind of hobbies is pretty natural. And the DLC was only like two and a half hours. Like I streamed the entire thing in one sitting. But damn, is that like the most like ecstatic I was to be like, yeah, I I actually really fucking love this medium. And it was kind of very refreshing to have that after just kind of like maybe churning through some stuff. I'm just like, I don't know. It's something to do. It's part of the hobby versus being super ecstatic. Um, But yeah, won't won't jump down into my essay notes, which I'm probably just going to have to toss into that video essay I've been putting off. Mm-hmm. um and then yeah i won't talk about any of the other games uh still playing tell me why it is probably one of my favorite video game stories of all time if not just stories in general um and great trans representation although i think it's taking a turn i think kind of dilutes the point a little bit but that's all I'll say for now because i haven't beaten mm-hmm. it uh currently i beat um last week i beat uh at dead of night which is a really spooky horror game but also mixed with the film medium so it's like a it's like a film and a video game in one and it's fantastic and it's spooky and i think uh if you guys if you guys 
like um like supernatural horror games mixed with uh a crazy killer trying to bonk you with a with a cricket bat um in a hotel then go go ahead and play that game <laughs> um also i beat uh a smaller game called Murder House, which is like a retro style game in the style of like an old PS1 horror game. Um, and like it was very reminiscent of like Haunting Grounds and like the fir- and like Silent Hill 3 a little bit because the prologue you start out in a mall and it's like it 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 was really spooky, but like also really kind of campy and I kinda I, I kinda loved it. <laughs> Is that by that like Puppet Master Studios, whatever that group's called? I believe so. Yes. I just, I they just do. Loved... Here, I'm gonna no. get a link. F- I'm gonna get a link for Go it on. because yeah, that developer. It's like one guy from Remember Correctly. Yeah. He just makes a game like every year. Um, right. It's called like he, he calls himself like Puppet Master right Studios or 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 Puppet something. Combo, I believe is his name. Puppet Combo. That's uh-huh. it. Hold on. While you look that up, Blaine, to, um, I think we got to get go ahead and get wrapping up pretty soon. Does anyone have any final statements or anything? Falcon and Winter and Winter Soldier is really good. It is. <laughs> yes. It is so, I'm, I'm so excited guy. for more. Oh. Give me my boy. I Give finished me my the Mandalorian boy. season two. I really want season three. Yep. I really want it. I still <laughs> have to finish that. Thank you for reminding me. It's good shit. Uh, Ghost of Mesa, do you have anything to say? Ghost of Mesa. Ghost of Mesa has nothing to say. I wish Mesa's <laughs> ghost could have actually come on. Yeah, me too. We love that you, Ghost requires, of Mesa. That requires that person to be dead. Unless he can astral project himself. I mean, Danny <laughs> Phantom's a ghost. <laughs> you don't have to be dead to be a, to be Danny Phantom. Oh my God. Um, for anyone who wants, so I put the link to Puppet Combos. Comp- he's selling, I think, almost every game he's released so far for eleven something, and you can tip a little bit extra. I just picked oh, it up earlier today, and I that's fantastic. Everything I could. Um, I guess before we go ahead and put our socials out and whatnot, I want to give a very big shout out to um, my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. Um, uh, to Robin Nomad and my buddy Sly. Uh, but one other big thanks I want to give this week is specifically to Blaine, because I don't know if I've Whoa. ever, I, I think we've acknowledged it, but I, I, I want to put it on blast now. I enjoy the level of discourse we can have, and it's all in good fun. And I think oh, yeah. you bring up a lot of valid points, and I love talking about stuff. I appreciate the fact that as heated as I do get, you don't do that shitty thing of like, okay, but no, ha ha. No, like you kind of let me have my time to speak about especially especially when it's something like uh, i mean how like when you first had me on here specifically to talk about the trans representation in last of us part two and my issues with that we love you blaine yeah we love you also everything he said to me to you too like (laughs) Uh, uh, we are a very we are a very diverse cast of people including a ghost including a ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One of my friends actually asked me just like, what are they point out? Like, yeah, the the podcast is diverse. And just like, I did not plan for that. I literally sent out some (laughs) Facebook messages just like, Hey, you're my friend. You want to do this? I just kept kind of showing up. So I love how, like, I still love how you've let me be like the non-committal, technically a member of the crew, but not completely a member of the crew. (laughs) It's a special spot. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> almost as special as being a ghost <laughs> um i guess before we sign off uh everyone want to give their social sarah you want to go and start uh at sarah of mars on twitter uh my blog is out here in this open space but that blog is has been quiet for right now until i start this super massive piece uh you could read my uh top five movies that would make great games on a mm, movie phone still um i don't know i i scream into the ether and i hope that people hear i think they hear (laughs) i hope that people hear uh Corey. um you can find me pretty much uh everywhere on instagram uh twitter twitch especially because i stream three days a week monday and tuesday 6 p.m pacific standard time and fridays at 7 p.m pacific standard time under the name king cory bear 
Awesome. And Blaine? Uh, you can find me. Just search Blaine, uh, quote, God killer, unquote, Anderson on Twitter. I'm going to be changing the at pretty soon. I'm just trying to think of something that is going to stick that isn't taken. And I don't have to tell people, oh, this is a weird spelling to do it because of Twitter's character limitations. Mm-hmm. All right. And you can find me basically every single place on the Internet at the Seth Urkage because no one else has ever used that name in the history of the internet, <laughs> uh, which is pretty convenient. Not going to lie. I was also uh, very happy that nobody snagged my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Game Set Should Podcast is filmed live here at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. You can find it later on podcast services as well as on YouTube as full episodes and in individually cut up segments. I stream here on Twitch kind of whenever-ish, about, usually about 6 p.m., um, best place to keep up to date with me, like when I'm planning to stream and whatnot, is on Twitter. Um, but next game, I'm probably going to be playing. Going to probably take a break from Resident Evil Six. We're going to dive into the specifically the Xbox Game Pass PC version of the Evil Within, uh, because that is a different uh, version yeah. than what's uh, available yeah. on Steam. Has has some fixes. Has some added modes, such as like first person. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to use that. Maybe mess around with it, but. Yeah, should be a fun time. I'm probably going to shoot for um, probably Tuesday to stream that. But yeah, that's about it. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.